Good evening and welcome to St. Thomas. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in the ordinary time. Our celebrant is Father Ray, our pastor, and he will be assisted by Deacon David. Please remember to silence your cell phones and any other devices which may disturb your neighbor. The gathering song, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, may be found on the blue sheet at the entrance. Please stand and sing. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you love us as we are. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you offer us the gift of your love and mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us forth that we might proclaim your love to all the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves, and we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. For anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, you shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people 
longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Praise you. Mary was a very devout Catholic person of great faith. She had absolute confidence that God will care for her under every circumstance, in every situation. And God had done that for her. Now Mary needed to pick up a prescription, and, and so she went to the drugstore to pick up the prescription. She was in a little bit of a hurry, and so as she came back to the car, she realized that she had locked the keys in the car. She did not get worried at that point. She didn't uh, overreact. Uh, she had every confidence that God was going to provide for her. So she began to pray. Dear God, you know the situation that I'm in. Please send someone to help me that I can get into my car so I'm able to drive away. With great confidence, she ended her prayer. I know you will hear me, oh God. Thank you. Not more than two minutes later, a man came walking down the street, an unsavory looking man. But Mary was always a person who greeted people, and so she greeted him. Hello, how are you? He was taken back by her greeting, and he came up to her, and he said, uh, is there something I can do to help you? And Mary said, absolutely, there is. And she explained her situation and the need to get into her car. And the man, in a rather gruff voice, said, yeah, I think I can handle that. And in a few moments, he unlocked the car. Mary was thrilled with that, and she thanked him profusely. And then she went to thank God. Dear God, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I thank you for sending this nice man to help me get in my car. The unsavory man then spoke up, interrupting her prayer. Listen, lady, I'm not a nice man. I just got out of prison for auto theft. <laughs> Mary was not the least bit dismayed with that. She continued her prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for sending this man. You didn't send me just anybody. You sent me a professional. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful when you have confidence in prayer. A wonderful approach to life. Our gospel today, a very famous gospel, most of you have heard it many times. The parable of the sword. What's the message of that gospel for us? What is that gospel saying to us? Jesus said, as we heard in the text, are often taught in the form of parables. And parables are a magnificent way of teaching. Uh, there oftentimes are many ways to understand a particular parable. You can come in it from many different directions. One of the ways that's always helpful with any part of Scripture to understand that Scripture is to put yourself into the text, to look and see where you fit. Where are you in that text, the text of the parable of the sword? Where do you find yourself? Indeed, many times there's more than one place, and we can learn more than one thing from a parable, that the teachings of Jesus are so rich. What can we learn from this parable? What is Jesus seeking to say to you 
what is Jesus seeking to say to me? Indeed, there are many ways of looking at the parable. Three that I will offer to you. Three ways that I put myself into the parable. Three ways I would invite you to put yourself in the parable. The first, that you and I are the soil. And the challenge that is ours, to be that good soil. We heard uh, in the gospel text that challenge that uh, ears that belong to hear what you hear but did not hear. And we have that opportunity with the scriptures today to hear the word of God. Were you listening to that word? Did it uh, touch your life? Did you receive it and let it be a part of your life? Uh, the first challenge that is ours is that challenge to be the soil, that you and I are the soil. Uh, in that perspective, uh, God is the sower, and the seed that is sown is God's love, God's mercy, God's word. The challenge is to be one who receives that love, that mercy, that word. I wonder, did that happen for you? Uh, as Jesus uh, speaks uh, of the parable, uh, Jesus offers that interpretation of the parable. And, and he challenges us to be the good soil, to hear this message. There are other possibilities. Uh, we can be uh, that foot tank, or, or we can be that rocky soil, or, or we can be that soil that has weeds around it, or we can be the good soil. The challenge that is ours is to be that good soil. That you or I, as we look at this parable, can see ourselves as the soil. To see God as the sower, to see the seed as God's word, God's love, God's mercy. And that we receive that, that is good soil. And in doing so, we produce a yield. A yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The first way of looking at it is for us to be the soil. There's a second way of looking at it. The second way of looking at it would be for us to be the seed. In looking at it that way, God, again, is the sower. And we are the seed. And the soil is where we put ourselves, the choices we make for ourselves. Whether those choices allow us to grow in our faith or whether they hinder us from growing in our faith. Every choice we make can be something that draws us closer to God. Some of the choices are minor. It probably didn't make much difference whether you put on a green or a blue shirt this morning. Probably didn't make much difference uh, whether you had oatmeal or toast for breakfast. What other choices? How did you use your time today? Did you have a quiet time today? A time of prayer today? Did you do something to help another person today? What were the choices that you made? You are a seed, a seed of God's love. And for that seed to grow, you have to choose places and make choices that are helpful for that. Indeed, you can make choices that make it more difficult, more difficult for you to grow, more difficult for your faith to mature. Or you can make choices that help you to grow in that faith. You make choices with regards to the friends that you have. You make choices with regard to the entertainment that you see. You make choices in all sorts of ways, particularly with the way that you use your time. Indeed, you are planted as a seed. God gives you the gift of life. God gives you the gift of faith. God challenges you to grow in that faith. That you are a seed that is challenged to grow in faith with God. A second way of looking at the story is that you and I are the seed. And the challenge that is ours is to make those choices that will allow us to grow, that we might produce a magnificent yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. A second way to look at it is in terms of us, you and me, being the seed. There's a third way of looking at it. The third way would be that you or I are the sower. Interestingly, a number of scripture scholars believe this was the primary meaning. This was the first meaning, uh, that we are the sower. That the seed is God's word, the seed is God's blood, the seed is God's mercy. And the challenge that is ours is to spread that seed. To spread that seed by proclaiming the good news. To spread that seed by proclaiming the gospel. Indeed, the challenge that is offered to us by St. Paul. St. Paul will challenge us to preach the word in season and out of season. To preach the word when convenient or inconvenient. St. 
St. Francis of Assisi had a wonderful line that he would offer. Proclaim the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. We should be doing that proclamation of the gospel at all times. We should be the sower. If we are the sower, what type of response do we give? What type of experience do we have in so doing? There can be the danger of growing discouraged. Uh, if you reach out to someone and they reject you, if you share the good news with someone and they are not accepting of it. And indeed, Jer Joachim, Jeremias, and other scripture scholars would say, this is what the parable is about. It's a parable about encouragement. Indeed, the name that Joachim Jeremias gives to the parable is the parable of great assurance. The great assurance being this. If you proclaim the word of God, there will be a result. There will be a yield. Now, in one sense, if you look at this, you might think, well, this is not a very successful thing. Uh, three out of the four do not produce good fruit. Three out of the four are failures. And if you look at it that way, then your success rate is only 25%, 75% failure rate. And that can be very discouraging, that three out of the four do not produce the fruit. And it would discourage you from continuing the proclamation. But the message of Jesus is that fourth one, the one that is the good soil, produces a yield far beyond what you would ever imagine, a yield far beyond double or triple or quadruple, a yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. It's an encouragement to continue to proclaim the good news, to continue to share God's word, even when there is rejection, even when it is not accepted by all. But the third, for us to look at ourselves as the sword, proclaiming God's love to all the world, and having a wonderful experience of a great yield resulting from that. The third way, to see ourselves as the sword. And so it is that today I come to bring you good news. Good news that you are called to be good soil, that the seed of God's love may find a place in you where it will grow, where it will yield a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. That you are that seed, that seed which will make those choices in life, which will allow your faith to grow, your faith to mature, and produce that yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. That you are called to be the sword, to proclaim God's love, both when convenient and inconvenient, both within season and out of season. That God promises with a great assurance that he will offer a magnificent yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Stand. Let us together profess our faith. Our profession of faith is the Apostles' Creed. We pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died in the Spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, confident in God's love and care, let us now bring to God our needs and the needs of all our world. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Reicha, and all who serve the church, that we may sow the seed of God's love in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
for the nations and people of our world, that all may share justly the many gifts of God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are struggling in any way because of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and food producers, that they may be blessed with a bountiful harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, the men and women of the armed forces and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, for the intentions of Charles Deering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful and loving God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust for you alone for our hope. We beseech you to remove the coronavirus from our world. We ask that you bring reconciliation to our civil discord. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory. It's without the end we acclaim. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
and then consume these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Simple announcements that I share with you. We appreciate and thank you for your understanding with regard to the precautions that are being taken in light of the coronavirus. Uh, as part of that, there will not be a recessional hymn today, but rather instrumental music. We would ask that you would please social distance uh, as you leave the church and you are dismissed with the dismissal from the deacon. Please leave any papers that you don't want to take home on the seat of the pew and our crew that comes in to disinfect will dispose of them. We would ask that you not linger in the gathering area but go directly to the parking lot or to the courtyard and you're welcome to visit as long as you wish uh, in those areas using social distancing. St. Thomas has rescheduled First Holy Communion and the RCA Sacraments Initiation. There are details of that in the bulletin. Uh, the bulletin is also online for those who may not be present with us uh, tonight. We offer thanks to everyone who has brought food for our food pantry. We're very grateful for your continued generosity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>